Hello, I'm Philip O'Reilly. I worked on Star Trek Picard on Season 3, Episode 5 of Imposters as a background actor. Star Trek is something I had always dreamed of working on. Star Trek The Next Generation specifically is one of my favorite television series. I grew up on it. So once I received the notice asking if I was available to work on its sequel series Picard, I didn't hesitate at the chance to do so. It was September 2021 and it had been over a year and a half since I worked on a television show or film set at that point due to circumstances such as health restrictions and seeking other opportunities. So I didn't expect to come back to the acting world, but Star Trek was the one thing to get me back into it, something I had to do. I had to go through a few steps though in order to finally cross this off of my bucket list. Before shooting, I worked a couple of days beforehand in preparation of the shoot day. One of the days involved a wardrobe fitting at Santa Clarita Studios where the main location for Picard is filmed at. At the fitting, I tried on the outfit that I'd be wearing on the shoot day. They had a card with a paper attached with my details on it that they used to photograph me in my outfit. The card said, District 6, Philip O'Reilly, Crins Thug. So now I had two different names for my role, Vulcan Thug as listed on my paperwork and Crins Thug according to wardrobe. One thing I found mildly amusing was I overheard someone working in wardrobe asking what season they were on, season 2 or 3. The confusion was understandable on their part as they were filming seasons 2 and 3 back to back and this was early on in season 3. Thursday and Friday, October 7th and 8th were the filming dates for me on location at Blue Cloud Movie Ranch. It is about 8 miles from Santa Clarita Studios. Also, the ranch is only about a 20 minute drive to the Vasquez Rocks that is used in the filming of various Star Trek series including Picard. Blue Cloud Movie Ranch is a fairly new filming location compared to other ranches, having only begun being used by studios in the year 2000. I have also worked on other shows there like SEAL Team. Both days had late call times because they are being filmed overnight. These overnight calls are also referred to as night calls. I began each day by checking in, going through wardrobe, then through hair and makeup. At hair, the man working with me appeared knowledgeable in Star Trek. I asked him if I was getting the traditional Vulcan bowl cut. He said that not all Vulcans style their hair in that fashion. I told him he can cut my hair in whatever way he wanted. He could even shave me bald if they needed. I was just excited to be part of the show. For makeup and prosthetics, I thought it was going to be a reasonably quick process. Perhaps some Vulcan ears will be plopped on me? and maybe some eyebrows would be slapped on me if by chance they didn't use my own thick eyebrows, but it was a more involved procedure than I anticipated. In consideration of them having to possibly put Vulcan eyebrows over mine, I even trimmed them up a bit, but it still gave them a little trouble covering them up. For the ears, I think they did a fantastic job at blending the Vulcan ears in with my own ears. The outdoor set used for the scene is normally used as an outdoor Middle Eastern market, more officially referred to as the Third World Town by Blue Cloud Movie Ranch, but was now given an extensive redress to appear like an alien planet city square. I think they did a marvelous job in transforming the plain set into an electrified, vibrant world full of character and life. As a Star Trek fan, in my head I was trying to figure out what planet we were supposed to be on. By some of the signs I saw, my best guess was we were on a planet that was part of the Orion Syndicate. It turns out that one of the signs was a sign on the Orion planet from the show Enterprise, and there were Orion dealers present. It appears that my guess was indeed fairly accurate. The set had many other elements to it, and it turned out the area was known as District 6 on the planet Metellus Prime. I had the pleasure of being one of the few to walk throughout the city set. Offset, when they were there, I was able to hang out with the background inhabitants that worked in the other scenes that took place at District 6. Most of them looked like they were aliens dressed up to go clubbing. The scene I worked on involved a confrontation between Worf, Rafi, and Kryn with his thugs. That's where I came in, one of Kryn's thugs. One of the few left in the now desolate city because everyone scattered due to the impending chaos they knew was about to occur. There were about three day player or stunt Vulcan thugs and four background Vulcan thugs. Worf and Rafi were held at gunpoint by us and words were exchanged. Kryn forced the two to do a battle to the death. Kryn mentioned that his men made a wager on the winner of the match. You can see me behind Kryn who is seated, handing over something, presumably currency to the other Vulcan thug. Although unseen by the camera, it was indeed a type of currency being exchanged. Props let me keep two of the coins used in the scene to wager. Here are some of the coins used. I really like the triangle shaped one. Near the end of the scene, all of the thugs were to be killed by Worf. We are instructed to fall down as if we had just been killed. 
On the first take, I thought I fell awkwardly. As I got up, I said as such. Kirk Ace Vito, who played Kryn, agreed to my sentiment. I got it right after that, at least to my own satisfaction, but I believe they used other shots instead. I was a bit sad that they killed off my character, but at least he was killed off by Worf. I am one of the few that hold that honor. Although I wasn't technically seen being killed by Worf, so I could possibly still be alive. One thing I didn't realize until later was that Worf had previously killed Galron played by Robert O'Reilly, and now Worf had killed the Vulcan thug played by me, Philip O'Reilly. I guess Worf doesn't really care for O'Reilly's. If I'm going to complain about anything working those nights on set, it would have to be about the temperature. We were outside all night from sunset until sunrise in October. Temperatures got to the low 50s. We were all obviously cold, we just had to endure the cold as best as we could. The show must go on. At wrap on the last day, makeup was kind enough to let me keep the Vulcan ears. I think I saved them for the trash bin, so it was no issue with them letting me have them. This has been my favorite prop piece that I've been able to keep from set. I have my very own screen used Star Trek memorabilia. I hope you enjoyed listening to my onset experience. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of any future videos. Thank you.